This week on Case Studies with the BizDoc, it's Rockstar Games. You asked for it, and I'm bringing it to you. I'm going to take you through their history, the great game franchises they have, including Grand Theft Auto, and where I think they're going and how they figure into a much larger company called Take-Two Interactive. This week... <laughs> Rockstar Games. First, let's go through the history and find out where did Rockstar come from? What was the emergence and who were the founders? Let's dive into that right now. The founders were these guys, Sam Hauser and Dan Hauser, brothers who worked for a dormant publishing arm of Bertelsmann. It was called BMG. And Bertelsmann's European uh, music-oriented, actually global now, music-oriented company. They would be joined up with these guys, Terry Donovan and Jamie King. They were already at Take Two. What happened next was the seeds of greatness as the two brothers in December of 1998 say, let's make Rockstar Games a high-end publishing arm of Take-Two Interactive. Let us set it up over here. Give us some autonomy. We've got financial responsibility to you and you need to help us fund the new games we develop, but let's find a unique personality for the games that we built. And that's what happened in December. In December of 1998, the Rockstar Games, as we know it, with the two Hauser brothers, was born. So what is Rockstar Games exactly? Well, they're a publisher and they're a developer. What is a publisher? A publisher is responsible for distribution, sales, marketing, ongoing support, those things. We could compare it very similarly in proxy to a book publisher. You look at the side of a book, maybe it says Macmillan, maybe it says Random House. That's the publisher of the book. They packaged it together, they brought the resources together, and they took it to the market, sold it, marketed it and had relationships with everyone from Amazon to Barnes & Noble to get it out there. That's what a publisher does. It's very similar in video games except the game developers are often more revered than even the authors are. Although people like Stephen King are quite revered. But Rockstar is also a group of developers. And the developers that have brought us the Rage engine, which is Rockstar Advanced Game Engine, and these incredible franchises that they put together. So they are both a publisher and a developer group that are actually owned by Take-Two Interactive, which is a giant publisher that trades on the stock market. So it all started with Grand Theft Auto, and Grand Theft Auto got a lot of free publicity in the beginning, partly because it was a very controversial game. Some of the gameplay dynamics were definitely for mature audiences, and you had parents and other people very concerned of what was going on. I'm not gonna judge that one way or another. I'm just gonna take you through these franchises because this is what built this amazing company. Grand Theft Auto comes out in 98. Shortly thereafter, Grand Theft Auto 2, Grand Theft Auto 3. So they had three episodes in this new franchise that were out by 01, which is three years after they started. In 2000, they then followed up the initiation of the Grand Theft Auto franchise with Midnight Club series. Then in 01, Max Payne. Then in 04, Red Dead. So if you take a look at the history of some of these franchises over time and the releases, they got off to an amazing blazing start knowing exactly what they wanted to be and the kind of content that they wanted to put together. Let's follow the Grand Theft Auto history a little bit. Vice City comes out in 02 and it sells 17.5 million copies, which is the number 35 video game of all time today as we look back on it. The rankings of the top 50, that's number 35. Then in 04, they came out with San Andreas. For those of you that are watching globally, if you don't know where San Andreas is or what San Andreas is, the San Andreas Fault runs down the middle of California, and it's been the subject of these mythical assumptions that if there was ever a biblical earthquake in California, half of it would fall into the ocean. It's the San Andreas Fault, and that's where San Andreas comes from. Nonetheless, it is today the number 15 video game of all times by unit sales, 27.5 million sold. Then Grand Theft Auto 4 back that up with 25 million units, and it's the number 18 video game of all time. And it was very interesting, in its first week, it did $500 million, half a billion in its first week, which showed you the pent-up demand and anticipation that all the audience and the, the game players in the universe were waiting for for each new release. It shows you the power of the franchise that's been created by the Hauser brothers. In 2013, Grand Theft Auto V, which would become the crown jewel of the franchise. 
at $6 billion of revenue. This makes it the single biggest grossing entertainment product of all time. And there is only one word for that, and that is damn. This thing has done more than Avatar, $2.8 billion around the world. This thing costs $250 million to make, which is more than Avatar and more than the first Avengers. Remember the first Avengers movie? We all sat there, oh my gosh, look at this. Look what they pulled together. Look at the graphics. Look at everything. This costs more to make than Avengers. It costs more to make than Avatar. We already got video game franchises now that are more successful than movies in terms of revenue, more expensive to make than movies, so bigger bets and bigger rewards. It shows you where the future of interactive entertainment is. It's in video games more than it is in cinema. And in cinema, they like to talk about opening box office. They like to talk about the first weekend. Uh-huh. Well, watch this. Six million were pre-ordered at $60 each, which means before it was ever released, they had $1.8 billion of revenue that was already going to be marked on the books. Pretty amazing stuff when you think about what's happening. Now, something I also mentioned here, I said that this was the number three video game in units of all time. Well, gee, Tom, what were the top two? They were these. Number two all time is Minecraft, 144 million units over its life. And number one, of course, it's this, the beloved Tetris, 170 million units all time, including 100 million in mobile. Now I know something about Tetris and mobile because the company I was privileged to be a part of, Jammed at Mobile, actually reached around the world and consolidated ownership and licensing for Tetris. And later, that would be part of the sale of Jammed at Mobile to Electronic Arts. Let's go take a look at Take Two. I have a chart right here of the last several years of their stock price. Now, as a little side note, a lot of you have asked me in the comment section, hey, Tom, how do you do case studies? Where do you find your information? My information, I love to find information on the public companies, the ones who are on the stock market, through a variety of resources. And I found one that I really like, it's pretty reliable, is Centio. So I can look it up and find earnings reports and things like that. There's a lot of places on the internet, but that's one that I use and some of you have been asking me about it. So I look it up and I find this. Well, take a look at the stock price. They were down here $15, $20 from 2010, a little bit of a spike there, 12, 14, 15, 16, six years. And what happens here? Well, there's a very interesting thing where you can correlate things that you look up on one side with things on the other side. What are those two sides? Well, we know that right here, Grand Theft Auto V was introduced in 2013. Then look what happened to the stock price over the last 18 months. It was sitting there at the end of 17, right around $35, $40 a share, and it has peaked here in 18 at $120 a share, making Take-Two Interactive worth in excess of $14 billion. Look at these two asterisks here. There's something that's happening in video games and it's happening in cinema, and that's digital delivery. I did a case study on that not too long ago on the digital delivery of live television. You can go look that up at the link that we put down below. Right here at the first asterisk in 17, they announced in their one of their earnings report that they were about 64% digital delivery, meaning you don't have to go down to GameStop or Best Buy and buy the box product. You're actually getting digital delivery on your console. That takes a lot of the cost of the product, shipping, creating, out of it and allows easier upgrading through the digital version. Just like on your phone, an app gets a digital upgrade. It's easy to put a fix or a feature things in through the digital version. Well. Now, they've indicated 2018 that they are now up to 81% digital delivery. What that means is 81% of the products delivered by Take-Two are now delivered digital delivery, which means when they get their $60, there's no cost for the software, there's no cost for the product packaging, there's no cost for shipping, and there's no cost to Best Buy because you're buying it now directly from the publisher in most cases. So when you take a look at it, the combination of the Grand Theft Auto franchise going through the roof, the $6 billion worth of revenue and 100 million units and digital delivery come together, that's what happens to your stock price. Let me know in the comment section if you'd like me to really dive down and do a full review of Take-Two Interactive because it has a sordid history going back at certain points, including some guys that got censured by the SEC and almost went to prison. So that's a little bit about Take-Two Interactive 
and the history and the franchises and all of those incredible locations of the men and women that are around the world doing the development and publishing work for Rockstar Games, making it what it is today, a global player. Now let's step back and look at some lessons for you and your company that we can take away from Rockstar Games. I've grouped up what I believe are the success factors. First of all, give the customers what they want. What do I mean by that? It's so easy to say that, and it's just sort of a blasé statement, but what it really means is that Rockstar Games knew who their customers were. They understood the options they had for product, and they put together what they felt was a modified first-person shooter game where they could take you into experiences and help you to feel those and experience them in new ways. The end result being, you get what you want as a gamer and you say, wow, I love this experience. I love the way it's come together. And that's part of the visioning process, visioning that an entrepreneur goes through, is to kind of see what they believe the customer is going to want by understanding that customer deeply. If you have a focus group together, most of the time they're just going to talk about making little improvements of today's products. 90% of the time, that's what you're going to get. It's rare that you're going to get vision coming out of focus group. Vision usually comes from entrepreneurs that says if people like this and this is where the future is and this is where social feelings will be and this is what the other gameplay dynamics and the other franchise if we do this and this and this I think we can put something together that is the bet and that is the responsibility of the entrepreneur to set a vision for new product so understanding the gamer and understanding the playing field of games is what was driving Hauser and Hauser as they built Rockstar Games so give the customers what they want then don't be afraid to break rules. They broke a lot of rules. You may not agree with the social dynamics and some of the activities that were happening in that first Grand Theft Auto game, and you can go back and Google all that controversy, but they broke rules in gameplay and ended up coming together with a genius product. Do you remember your first reaction to the Kill Bill movies? You're like, whoa, that was over the top and that was two months. Well, guess what? People like Quentin Tarantino broke rules in movie making to take us to new places. You can also take a look at it the other way. James Cameron broke rules in Avatar about animation and about the dynamic and the length of the movie. Will people sit through this? But he broke rules and look at what we felt about that. So you can break rules on both ends of this creative spectrum without judging that spectrum in its entirety and appreciate what Rockstar has done. Don't be afraid to break those rules. And then be unafraid to cut what isn't working. There have been many interviews that the Hauser and Hauser have been in that they talk about that parts of it, they were unafraid to cut it. They didn't feel it was working. But so much time, so much effort, and so much development went into it. And it was really beautiful. But they looked at the story arc or the tapestry of the game. They looked at the leveling and the progression the player goes through. And they say, you know what? I don't think that works. I don't think that's part of it. And they make the hard decision to cut. Be unafraid to cut the things that aren't working or that you don't think are living up to the vision and expectation that you're putting for that particular product. Be unafraid. In corporate environments, entrepreneurial minds get snuffed out and you'll find people that get married to this product or that product and they refuse to cut it. Well, they don't have any skin in the game, so of course they're not going to cut it and they're just going to defend it because they're protecting a job. These guys are protecting a product and protecting a legacy. Lastly, take pride in the whole experience. You know, when I think about the whole experience, there's a couple companies I think of that do a great job at that. One of them is Apple. Apple is the whole experience. You look from when you go into shop, to the iPhone, to how it works, to how it's packaged. That's a perfect example of end-to-end -end experience that's managed carefully. That's what Rockstar does. When you think about the end-to-end -end experience of the Rockstar games, the multiplayer, the online registration, everything they've got, and the gameplay dynamic in each new episode in the series, they've really got it knocked in terms of understanding that whole experience to continue to deliver that payoff to you and me when we trust them with our dollars for each new game that we buy. So whether it's Apple or whether it's the Four Seasons Hotel, putting the entire experience end to end, like Rockstar has done, delivers a huge payoff for the end user, you and me, that say, I'm glad I spent my $60 on the next version of the game. This is phenomenal. It just works. It's beautiful. And when it's end to end and you agonize about the whole experience, it's a huge, huge win for you and your customer. Well, I think these are the two summaries that come out of it, is that they haven't compromised on quality. Gameplay dynamic, 
quality new features, quality new experience, delivering all of that, and they're street smart. When you read about the history of Rockstar Games, there's some very interesting things. They went and actually spent time in a prison, not overnight and things like that, but they went into these atmospheres and into these neighborhoods to really understand the feel of what's there so that they could capture it back into the game. They're not giving you a poor man's Hollywood view of what they think a prison is like, what they think a neighborhood is like. They have taken time to bring street smarts to it, to bring an authentic feel to what they ultimately deliver in terms of the gameplay and all of the scenes and the sound and the graphics that are put together to make the whole experience come together. Street smart can't be taught. They had to go out and get it. No compromise on quality can be taught. And there are other people beyond me that have talked about these very success factors that make them who they are, but that whole package comes together to deliver the Rockstar brand experience, regardless of which title and which franchise that you are a fan of. You can take these tips and put the whole thing together and apply them to your business. As I'm fond of saying, whether you're running a t-shirt company in Berlin, a jelly company in Belarus or you're building social media at a new lab in Austin, Texas. All of these principles can be brought together even though you're not in entertainment and $250 million budgets to build a game franchise, you're building your own small company. These are lessons that come right out of it for you and me. That's what I think about Rockstar Games. What do you think about Rockstar Games? Leave us a comment below. We listen to you. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I also take suggestions for companies you'd like to see me cover in the future. That's where the suggestion for Rockstar Games came from, from one of you. Until next time, remember, we want you to subscribe because when we get to a million subscribers, it's the first annual Valuetainment Conference featuring Patrick Bed David, yours truly, the biz doc, and other leaders and entrepreneurs to make you better, your company better, and the people you touch better still. Until then, I'm Tom Elser with the biz doc, and I hope I left you better than I found you. Mm -hmm.